go away. My dress gets caught. Okay, this, what I'm going to read to you is not my responsibility, okay? It's from your brother. Yes. Um, oh, thank you. Daniel couldn't be here, so I'm just, he forwarded me this letter. My brother, from the same mother. Firstly, I want to say I'm proud of you. You have turned into a man that I can even look up to in certain areas, especially with how far you have come to make your family work and growing to become the great dad that you are. And I know an amazing husband to Ray Ray. Growing up, we had our ups and downs, but the older we got, the closer we will be. I know this. We are so different, but so much alike, and I'm looking forward to the day where we can all, where we can call each other best buds and not just brothers. I remember when we were little, living on Chestnut Street, and you were in the bathroom, getting ready for bed. As horrible as I feel for doing this now, I unloaded a whole tube of toothpaste into the sink and yelled for Dad. Blaming it on you. But then I also remember the time Dad made me wipe your bum after a dropping a cannon into a toy. <laughs> so that you could look at that as sweet redemption. <laughs> we have lots of good memories, but I know there is a far better far better ones to come in our lives. I miss you and I'm so happy for you and your family. And I wish you guys all the success and happiness as you guys officially start this life together. Yes, happy wife, happy life, bro. Love you. Now I got a few things to say. So, I, I know there's no time over here, but I'm not gonna be that long, but. <laughs> but I heard that in some traditions, uh, mothers are not allowed to speak at their son's weddings. Wedding. And um, when I heard that, I thought I couldn't imagine me not ever being able to speak at your wedding or to share on a special way what's in my heart. And I think every parent anticipates this date for their child, especially when it's the right partner. Well, what a journey you two have been on. You two have been on quite the pilgrimage. And when this day is over, I think you should start to write a book. And I'm sure it would hit the bestseller list because of all the things that you both have been through. But all kidding aside, Justin Ramey, you have proven through all the hardships, all the trials, and all the many road bumps in the road that love does prevail. You have both demonstrated tenacity, boldness, accountability and determination to build a life together. If you're both thinking of another tattoo, <laughs> it should say what God has joined together, let no man put us on you. The faithfulness of God in your lives is very apparent. Your lives are a testimony and a witness that when God purposes something, no one can get in the way. And if there's anything that I can say to encourage you both, is to keep Jesus Christ the center of your marriage, of your home, of your lives separately. Because differences will come, opinions will rise, but if you prefer one another, peace will reign in your home and it will reign in your marriage. And if you're both relying on the very foundation and the very principles of Jesus, then you're gonna have a strong marriage. Reigning, I love you. I love your spunk, I love your zeal, I love your compassion and heart, and there isn't anyone else that I could possibly ever want for a daughter-in-law. You're the only one meant for Justin. And when God was planning out the lives of you and Justin, I believe he stamped on your heart reserved for Justin. You're both a match made in heaven, and I love you very much. And I just want to thank you, Ray, for loving Justin unconditionally. I also want to say thank you to Rick and Elaine for loving Justin and believing in him and receiving him into your family. 
you're both a blessing to him. Thank you. Okay, now, <clears throat> my little boy, Justin, who's not so little. Justin, I love you. I love you so very much, and I'm so very proud of you and all your accomplishments. And as I was preparing this, I sat and I thought about so many memories and moments, some bad, some happy, some scary, some heartbreaking. But through every one of them, God has been there with you, strategically planning out everything in your life to bring you to this day. All the hardships, all the tears, all the good times, all the laughter, shaping you into the man that you are today, here in front of all these witnesses. I wish they could all really see every little intricate part that played in your life up to this point to make you the man you are today. And if I were to tell them all the stories of how God has moved mountains for you and changed circumstances for you. <laughs> and how very real he has been in your life. He would be, I, we would be here for a long time. The truth is God gets all the glory for what he's done in your life. And I can stand here tonight and say as your mom, there has never been a dull moment in raising you. Watching you grow into the handsome, smart man that you are. And all the times that you put me on the edge of my seat, praying and wondering and being assured by God that you were going to make it. I would do it all over again just to have the opportunity of being in that part of your life. But now you're a man with a wife and a family, and now my part is to be on the sidelines, watching, anticipating, and praying for you both, the blessings and the blessings unfold in your life. I wish you peace, I wish you joy, and above all, love. Love that will prevail and flourish in your relationship with God and with your wife and with your family. I love you more than words could even say here today. Okay, so then we're going to have, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, Rick and Elaine Linus, which is Raylene's mom and dad. Seeing God work 
and I'm going to call it a miracle because there's nothing else for it. Because we saw two people who wanted what they knew to be true, but they had a lot of obstacles to get through. And they just decided that it was for everything. So caution to the wind, get on their knees, put everything before the Lord, be a part, and wait. And that wait was murder. I'm just going to tell you that it's murder. <laughs> and so, you know, Raylene asked me to trust her months and months ago. And you know when it's your daughter? It's a scary thing. But you're right. So, Mrs. Bruder, <laughs> and I have been waiting to call you that, my advice for you. You say, how do we do it? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how bad it ever gets. As long as you hold hands, right. you never fall off the right. Your marriage will have ups and it will have downs. That's life. But as long as you, even if it's a pinky, never, even if you don't speak, and even if there are nights when you just hold hands because you can't speak, never let go. And Justin, you know, I raised three girls. And then I get, I get some granddaughters, but I get all these grandsons, and now I have another son. Another son-in-law. I already have two amazing ones. Now I have one more. And you know, you just have that. And I know what it was that stole my daughter's heart. Because you have that look, you have that charm, you have that smile, and you don't go away. <laughs> Which is good. <laughs> and that's a good thing. And I've watched you with Bryce, and I've watched you with Rain, and I see two children that when you came back into the picture, their lives lit up, their eyes lit up. And that told me more than anything else. Nobody had to give me words. I opened their eyes. And so, you have got a precious family and one's bouncing behind you. My son heard her name. But you have a precious family. And I know that you will watch over them. And that you will keep your arms around them. And that you will protect them. Because now, we turn her over to you. Now it's my turn. Our clothes are long for I guess the first piece of advice I gotta give you, Justin, is don't shoot your father in law the next time you go and play uh, play ball. Even even my trainer couldn't help me for a week. And uh, it's not recommended now. Family, okay. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's it's absolutely been a roller coaster ride. There's no question. Um, there's, uh, I think I even asked you to go away once. <laughs> That's exactly what I mean. You do fit in, yes. Uh, you know, it's interesting. You don't. You can pick your friends, but you can't pick your family. And uh, you know, we we didn't get a say in this one, guys. Uh, <laughs> but as Elaine mentioned, we. We watch the kids, we watch their eyes, we watch their responses. And when you were not in the picture, they weren't the same kids. You knew. You knew. You knew all the way along. And all we needed to see was that you were willing to fight for it. So congratulations. 
you're the winner. <laughs> There's um, You know, there's a lot of people in this room that are, are part of our business and um, a lot of you guys have heard me say many, many times, it's not supposed to be easy, it's just supposed to be worth it. And uh, there's no different in this. It's just got to be worth it. And when you know it's worth it and you're willing to fight to the end, there's nothing that can't be accomplished. His mom said, don't let go. Don't let go. It's going to be a fun ride. I love you guys. <laughs> it has been a fun ride. <laughs> Congratulations to each and every one of you guys. Thank you to all of you beautiful ladies that participated in the, uh, uh, in the wedding and all you crazy guys that uh, participated. We won't talk about last night. Um, but uh, thank, thank you for everybody that is... Uh, Directly and indirectly had either something to say, a word of encouragement, uh, a, you know, a shoulder to cry on, just something over this last nine years to make this day possible. That's why you guys are here today. So thank you. Okay, is there anybody else from the family that would like to say something to Justin Reed? No. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to say something real quick, and then we're going to have the rest of the bridal party or the wedding party. Um, uh, I've known Justin since he was about, oh, 13, 14, somewhere around there. So um, I married into the family. My wife is uh, Justin's older sister, Sarah. And seeing Justin move from where he was, this little rambunctious little young teenager to where he's at today, um, blesses me to see the growth and to see the maturity and to see the all of the the tough things that come in life that you fought, man. Even hitting some rock bottom areas, you fought. And that really, really uh, touches my heart. And I would never let anyone say a bad thing about Justin, because I knew. I knew that something in him was bigger than him. And it was the God in him would not allow Justin to quit because there was a plan for your life. And he wanted to see the best for you. And now he's provided the best for you. So on behalf of our family, we just want to uh, welcome you, Raylene, into our family. You know, I truly believe that God uh, brings people together and different relationships and families to create a different atmosphere. No, it would be so boring if all of us were the same. And so I, I so enjoy your, your wit and your, your fun, funness. My daughter adores you, you know. And so we just want to say thank you and welcome to our family. We would never close the door to you, especially me and Sarah. We told you our door is always open to the both of you. You. I, I love you more than even words can say. Man. I grew up by you. An only child. I've never had a brother. And to watch you go through the things you did, I want you to know personally that I'm always there for you. And I'll give you one piece of scripture that can hold dear to your hearts for the rest of your lives. Um, is to trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not unto your own understanding. And in all your ways, all of your ways, Acknowledge Him, and He'll direct your path. Amen? And so, we just love you, we bless you, and we give God thanks for you. Amen? All right. So, 
wedding party. Is there anybody from the wedding party? I'm gonna, I'm gonna let the, the wonderful young ladies go first. If uh, anybody from the bridal side would like to say something about Raylene and Justin and their date today, you're on the wall. So the best man. also 
helping raise great women as well as he did the most beautiful lady and um, the most strong headed person in the world. <laughs> and one of the most patient people that I've ever met, especially at the Instagram right here. Um, without everybody's hard work, it's a special occasion. I first met this wonderful man here in uh, grade six. I don't know if it was because we had the same name or if it was just because we were young and stupid, but <laughs> our friendship kind of started off pretty quick. Um, as the years went by, we kind of grew apart. We always stayed in touch when I was living in Sarnia and he was living out west. Is that better? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Can you guys hear me? Now. Now I can. <laughs> we always stayed in touch. He was always there. He's been the best friend of me that I've had. Um, we've had a lot of rough times. We've had a lot of good times. A lot of those times I can't really go into, but I keep it short and sweet. Um, but no matter what, you can pick a better man to uh, save for the rest of your life. And a better man for both of us to call our best friend. Um, <laughs> the first time I met Raylene um, started after about a three hour wait in the elevator, waiting to be rescued. Do you remember that? We um, may or may not have been jumping around a little too hard and we got stuck, but we finally made it over there. The um, original plan was to just go get milkshakes, but I knew secretly his plan was to bring me along to the Caribbean, so how can I say no? Um, Justin and Irene have been blessed with two amazing children, a very loving and supportive family from both sides, and a special bond that not a lot of us get to experience. They have taken a lot longer than most of us would have liked and not with every share of mistakes along the way, but we're here today and it's time to celebrate. Love never gives up, never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. I love you both. happiness of the bride and yeah. Okay, so I guess we're going to have Justin and Marie now come up and Give everybody some thanks for sharing your day with us. And uh, here we go. the 
cross of when I found my way back to Grayley and my family. Um, we come to love not by finding a perfect person, but by learning to see an imperfect person perfectly. I would like to thank Raylene. This topic here we could uh, talk about for a few days. If I really went in, into it all, um, love began with a necklace getting taken, and the only way I was getting it back was a kiss on the lips. Uh, 20 minutes later, getting smacked in the face because I liked her friend. And it just wasn't a good scene back then. And this was when I was like 13, guys, so 11. Sorry. Give me, give me some grace. I'd like to thank her for the grilled cheeses and the showers. I want to thank her for putting up with me. I was I was a great deal to handle, still am, but more bearable. Uh, for our beautiful children, the better looking the most. I'm sorry. <laughs> For the love that we have for one another, uh, for our growth, our growth is immense um, to the next 60 years. <laughs> I have learned that being broken is a good thing. For some of us to get to the point of being broken, it is a very, very hard and broken road. But if you just look around with open eyes and ears to ears, the broken path doesn't have to last forever. Even though I fail all the time, I learn fast because the depth of my previous brokenness, brokenness led me to be humble and stronger than ever. I think before I speak sometimes, think before I act, I'm more caring, harder working, loving, less self-seeking, more compassionate because of Raylene and my kids. I've become a light in other lives because when people look at other people and say there is no hope for that person, I know there is because the cross and people who love you and care about you, all things are possible. I'm sure there is many things that brought my life to the amazing state that it is right now. Like a praying mother and a family, a woman who loved me through all my garbage. But a man I want to talk about today was Rick for the conversation we had in a parking lot at Starbucks. That day changed me forever. That day for me was like the day someone has been in Barcelos and decides to go ambassador. After being in Bai for two years, for me, I was in life for 25 and it just clicked. The race began. Within one year, I got my grade 12. Rob, not my GED. I got my OSSD. He wrote that to me in a letter. I got a job at Rankey and within the first five months, I became number one in sales in Ontario. Within seven months, I got offered a job at Rogers and been doing great ever since. What I am getting at is life is all about being broken and changed. I would like to thank my amazing mom for her prayer, her strength, her integrity to God, to her persistence to stand on the word of God for that which is righteous, true, for all those nights she sat on the phone with me in prayer, for the times I know she spent in prayer for my family that I didn't know about, for encouraging me encouraging me to stay strong when I was at my weakest points. For being the godly example in my life that no matter what bad path I had gone down, the conviction of God was always there. Because I knew the home I came from as I got older and see how easy it is to fall into the things of the world. I thank you for being that example to me. 
I want to thank my dad for being a good example to me of what it is to be a hardworking man, to, say, to stay true to your responsibilities, and thank you for your amazing relationship we have built in the last two and a half years, how far we have come. Thank you for showing your love and acknowledging my accomplishments. And to hear, I am proud of you, son, is all I needed. I'm proud of you, son. Love you, man. Thank my stepdad for also teaching me to be a hardworking man and to love and to trust in God. I want to thank you for all the times that we gave up and you piped up and said, no, this is not what God has intended to happen. You stood in the gap when everybody else was negative. Love you for that. I want to thank my friends that have been there for me through my life and never, never left me even when I was a selfish friend. Thanks for always being there for me when I needed you just to talk. I don't know if I'll do that well, but uh, I will attempt. Okay. First of all, thanks guys for all of you who are here. Um, after this, there's a chance party, so we'll dance and have some fun. And before I get crying, um, out in the hallway, if nobody has done it yet, there are some rocks and some sharpie markers. For those of you who have some advice or just something awesome that you want to say for us, if you can just write it on a rock and stick it in the uh, glass canister that's there, we're going to read the messages we get home or hang it. And uh, we'd like to have those in moments where we just need an extra stepping stone in our relationship. So, here we go. Um, not sure where to start. As most of you know, this relationship has been an absolute whirlwind, if that's even close to the word to actually describe it. Um, it started out innocent when we were 11 at London Gospel Temple, where being a girl who went for what she wanted in life took Justin's necklace and wouldn't give it back unless he kissed me. Um, so this is where our love began, well, at least mine. He, on the other hand, liked a friend of mine. Fast forward a few years to junior high where we found each other again. Me in my baggy pants that we could both share, I'm sure. With my hair every color of the rainbow, I was still smitten. There was just something about him. Must have been that Swiss Army club. We move into high school now, grade nine, I think was when Justin and Curtis would show up at the door of the house to get a cigarette. <laughs> Pretty sure he just wanted to see me, but wouldn't admit it. A few years after that was when we would lay in the back of Cindy's pickup truck in the back of my parents' driveway and listen to Disc Man. <laughs> Not an iPod, a Disc Man. Blasting Keith Urban and stare at the stars together. Shortly after that, our beautiful son was conceived. Babies having babies. Bryce truly was my saving grace. I have no idea where I would be today without him. Being young parents was not easy. Both of us made some stupid choices. However, each of those choices have created such an amazing story and brought us to where we are today. 2008, we moved to Calgary, where Justin and I decided that maybe we really did like each other. <laughs> Got engaged, and shortly after, along came our princess. Still young and stupid, we continued to make dumb choices, and apart we grew again. Moving back to London was possibly the best thing we could have sorry that could have happened to us. At the time, as we needed love, prayer, and support. So many of you in this room can attest to that. It truly is nothing short of a miracle, like my mom said, that we are together and that we stand here today as a family. God truly has become the center of our relationship. Daily we strive to be the best that we can be. I cannot tell you the hours of prayer that have gone into this. And I'm not just talking about Justin and mine. Every one of you guys, Michelle, Sarah, Steve, Mom, Dad, Bobby, Cheryl, I cannot count tears shed, the amount of forgiveness, oh 
both accounts. I love where we are and words cannot describe how unbelievably I am grateful to every single person who has walked this journey with our hand in hand, side by side, or even from the sidelines. We love you all so much. Probably cry here. Whew. <laughs> to the friends and family who have taught, sorry, who have laughed with us, cried with us, prayed with us as we struggle through. Thank you so much. To our parents, we are so grateful. Thank you for your constant love, support, prayers, friendship when all you wanted to do was scream at us, tell us to walk away. Thank you, each of you for your examples of love to each other and for us. You truly set the bar. To our siblings, thank you for being there through the good, the bad, the ugly, and still being here standing beside us today. Even in times you weren't sure. To our parents, Bobby, Cheryl, Carl and Cheryl, Thank you for your love and prayers, support and guidance. We love you all. To our friends, we love you guys. Thank you so much for loving us and for being with us today. To our kids, to our little man. Thank you for your patience. As mommy and daddy grew up, Bryce especially, Last but not least, just wow, what a ride.